Hi everyone, how's it going? My name is Paolo Moretti. I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot client server connectivity issues between Power Center clients and Informatica server. You might get different errors at the client side. We'll be focusing on these two errors. The first one is caused by clients not being able to get the Informatica server's host name and port number to start establishing the connectivity. The second one means that the client has been able to, to connect with the server and is getting, it is getting an answer, a response that uh, is not able to understand. We'll also have a quick look at the tools we are going to use, the power center's connectivity, and we'll have two troubleshooting exercises. This, the first one, will be about the first error and we'll do it in this video and we'll have a different video about the second error uh, so this is the first of a two series video for those of you who are not familiar with the Microsoft Sys internal tools and who are more familiar with the uh, Linux tools we could say that process monitor is the equivalent to the Linux S trace process explorer the equivalent to the Linux LSOF and then TCP view is just a visual net stat. So this is just a very simplified view of the power center's connectivity. As you can see we just rely uh, for the transport layer on TCP and um, it's useful to know that um, at the application layer we use HTTP and we actually use SOAP for messaging. The messages are formatted using XML. So this might be useful when you are working with Wireshark and you want to filter out messages. Um, then what we need to know as well is that even though we can see that there is a direct connectivity between the client and the services, what the clients do uh, when they try to connect to, to a service um, is establishing a connection with the domain first. Then at the domain level we have multiple core services for instance the user management service, the licensing service so the client establishes uh, multiple sessions one with uh, each core service and eventually the domain route the connectivity, the connection to uh, the services, either the integration service or the repository service. Apart from this very simplified view, um, we might be in a, in a more complex scenario. Uh, for instance, you might be working from a remote location, so you might be on a VPN, there might be firewalls, proxies in between, you might have a server with a multi-homing configuration, so multiple NICs, so that means that maybe you are uh, connecting to a NIC and then for some routing misconfiguration at the server side, uh, the packet, so the answer is sent through a different NIC. So scenarios like this might require um, troubleshooting at the server side as well. In this case, we are just going to work with what we have at the client side. And um, since, of course, this is a client, uh, as, um, what happens when, when a client starts to connect to a server? So it picks up a random port. So that means that we cannot choose since the beginning a port as um, something that you know we can use to filter the information because it's random and it's not only r just one single random port as I've mentioned we establish different sessions TCP sessions with the core services and eventually a session with the service so that means that we might pick up different random ports uh, from from the operating system from, the, from from Windows, and this makes the troubleshooting more uh, more complex. 
So let's start with the first troubleshooting exercise. So here we are with our first issue. I'm going to use process monitor and it is filtering this process only, so pmdesign.exe. So I'm going to work with the Power Center Designer client and let's start collecting data. Let's start the application. So the application is here, everything is fine. I would just, since it keeps collecting data and slowing down the system, I would just you know, get rid of this information. We are not going to need it. And then we'll try to connect to this repository and see what happens. Okay, so you can see it's complaining about that first error we mentioned at the beginning. And just at the start of the trace, let's stop this by the way, we can see that this is the missing file. So it's not able to find um, this file, domains.info, in this location. And in fact, if we look into that location, we can see that, okay, we've got that pmreplib.org log, which is just a log file generated by the designer. And, um, and that's, there, is, there is no domains.info file in there. So since this information is already in here, maybe something happened um, and um, we could try to recreate it, but in cases like this, uh, probably the best thing to do, um, the quickest way to um, reestablish a successful connection without having to uh, recreate this connection, or maybe deleting the repositories from here and recreating the connection again, is to download that domains.info from, from the server itself. So um, I'm already connected to the server here. So this is my location, the local site. So, and this is my server. So I can pick up the domains.info here. I will download it. It's still in here. So let's clean it, this up, start collecting again and then let's try to establish the connection okay it's still complaining because I haven't restarted the application so let's restart it again let's wait for this to clean up and let's restart it again. So we replaced that file and now we can filter it again, try to establish the connection. Okay, and as you can see, this is the second error that we are going to troubleshoot. Uh, but the first error is gone. So this is the second error. The first error gone, is gone, and in fact, it's been able to find that domains.info file. Um, I want just to show you what that file looks like. So, as you can see, this is just a file that contains the domain name, and then you have the host and the port. If you have a multi-node scenario with multiple gateway nodes, you will have multiple entries in there. But this is what the client needs to be able to establish a successful connection with the domain. And about this error, well, we'll look into this error in the second um, video. So any feedback about this video, just let us know and I'll see you um, on the second video about the second error. Thank you.